with food choices, our topic today, simple economic food choices for your health, I, I do certain things, right? You guys do certain things. Can we improve them a little bit? Probably. Can we not have that midnight snack? Probably. But can we overall have a good staple of foods we eat every day that allows us to stay healthy long term? So we don't have problems, if we don't have it already, with diabetes, with metabolic issues, appendix issues, gallbladder issues. So I deal with a lot of healthcare practitioners, maybe not medical doctors, but functional medicine doctors that talk about the lifestyle and mindset. Number, number two things they work for, one and two, mindset and lifestyle to how people stay healthy. A lot of understanding your recovery is based 90% of what we think, our habits, what we do every day. And when we have those habits down, it's not hard to not eat ice cream every day or have that piece of chocolate every day. But it's getting the habit of not doing it because sometimes the habit of doing it is even stronger. Okay? My funny story, look at the very, very top portion where it says, the, again, the outline's going to be in the show notes too, is a lot of it is the basics, protein, carbs, and fat. Every Friday night, so we're in town, nothing going on, my wife and I have, my wife and I have a date night. No kids anymore at home, empty nesters, thank God, first year. Last kids are in college. A lot of it is, my wife will ask, where do you want, where do you want to go to dinner? I'm like, well, how about, I don't know, where do you want to go? I don't know where you want to go. <laughs> so I usually break down and I say, hey, it doesn't matter where we go, it's going to be protein, carbs, and fat. <laughs> what flavor do you want? She goes, oh, I'm like, I know. That's what it comes down to, right? How much do you want to spend when I talk about economic and simple? And how, what flavors do you want that night? I'm more of a simple guy. Give me a cafe, boom, I'll eat something simple. Usually, if it's a big meal, we'll split it. And, and my wife likes to order a side salad wherever we go. So if a side salad, we'll be there no matter what. I get, I'm gonna, I, I like to drink a lot of expensive beverages. I drink water. How much does water cost so far? Nothing. First you buy a soda or a beverage, what happens? It's like 350 for a soda. I'm like, well, how did it get 350? I don't know. <laughs> sometimes we, sometimes um, a couple of kids will come dinner with us, dinner, I, and my wife will ask, well, okay, if so-and-so comes. Or, I'm like, well, how many kids are you talking about that kind of minimize what we're going to eat? I'm not going to go to a fancy steak place because I have four kids that don't eat a lot of food. So I want to make sure we talk about simple economic. It, foods are very, are very, if you want to break it down, vitamins, minimal, minerals, protein, carbs, and fat, that's what our body needs to survive. Do a lot of us, do we have, I know I do, have more than I need to survive today? Yes. Okay, I probably will eat a little bit more than I need to survive because I have a chance to work out this morning. So talk about protein, carbs, and fat. You want a good balance based on our lifestyle, based on our goals. If you want to lose weight and you want to eat, for example, if I burn 1,200 calories today, I want to eat hopefully 10, 1,000 calories. I want, to eat, I want to eat or absorb protein, carbs, and fat less than I actually want to, uh, less, less than I want to burn. I have a busy day, okay? We all know we're hungry, right? What happens when we're hungry? What does our body feel? What do you think? Sometimes sweaty. What's that? Sometimes sweaty. Yeah, sometimes sweaty, like, oh, a little yeah. jittery, a little sweaty, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I get that growls in my stomach. My body gets hangry, and it's like, okay, do something. You know, but I've, I read also, when you have those stomachs where they start to growl, it's actually your body working to clean out your intestinal tract. So I'm like, hey, maybe that's a good thing. Okay? I get tired. I take sometimes a little bit of a headache, too. And I'm just like, ugh. The wife says, are you, are you hungry because you're grouchy? I'm like, because, eh, maybe I am. We want to have something we have all the time versus having, for example, one big meal all the time where it puts us out. When we eat too much, what does our body do? Excuse me? It's sluggish. It's sluggish, right? It can't break it down fast enough. So at that point, it drops our, it increases our blood sugar, and we feel like, whoa, a little bit woozy sometimes also, okay? We also get to store the food more. It's gonna turn in to basically glycolysis and store it as fat or sugar in your body. So you wanna make sure if we're going, if our goal is, how do I eat healthy versus, versus just to eat, I wanna eat a little bit less that I would normally eat. Unlike I was trained when I was a kid, I was told always finish your plate, right? One time I was on a trip with my grandparents, we went from Philadelphia to Maine, we had to stop at a truck stop. 
if I had ordered like a half a chicken and I didn't eat one piece of one drumstick, that drumstick was on my plate the next three days. I'm like, dang it. So we are sometimes, I would call it scarred as kids to finish our plate. Versus can we take that home and eat it maybe not the next three days, but maybe the next day. Again, I had, I had right now I'm an empty nester, but I had four kids at home at the same time. So I always shop for in the kitchen when I went to go eat something at the back of the fridge. Okay? I don't know if you have grandkids or kids now. A lot of kids don't eat leftovers anymore. What's wrong with them? I'll eat leftovers all day long. That's where I shop first. So when I did that, sometimes it's because it's not fast. So now I kinda now that I, now I have more control over my fridge, I can be more specific of what I eat. Okay? The next part is we talked about better choices. What are better choices in, for example, proteins? What's a better protein source? Is it a 90% fat hamburger every day with a big piece of cheese on it? Sounds good. It does sound good, but I'll need to put these three chairs together to take a nap afterwards. That'll be my thing, okay? And again, once in a while, it's not gonna kill you, right? Let's be honest. When my dad growing up, his doctor would tell him, eh, having a hot dog, a beer, and a hamburger every day is not a bad thing. But when you have that in your mindset and not knowing other choices, you don't gravitate toward the chicken or even, even not just chicken, dark bread chicken, like for example thighs or, a, or a, a drumsticks, but also chicken breast or fish, things like that. Is pork good for you, pork? Is it the other white meat? Pork is basically a lot of fat, a lot of cholesterol. Okay? So we call it, remember when that commercial came out a couple years ago, probably 15 years ago, the other white meat, great marketing, very false. It's, when we talk about a fatty meat, it's high cholesterol. Why is cholesterol bad for us in our meats? It makes our arteries harder, higher risk of, of aneurysms and heart attacks. So I heart attacked just my own personal story. I heart attacked, a general issue heart attack three years ago. That, was, that happened to me. I don't have a left circumflex, I only have a right corner. So I, I try to minimize my cholesterol as much as possible. Because the risk, even though I had stents put in, the risk now is still higher for me. Because I had the great American diet. They call it the sad diet, I forget that said part. Oh, that'd be great, that'd be great. Yeah, baby, if you want to prop it up with, prop it up with a, maybe a, a puzzle, prop it open. Okay. So maybe prop it open. Okay. So somebody comes in, maybe we use one of the puzzles you want. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. So a lot of it is, can we eat what's going to be good for us? So proteins with me, for me, is going to be a, a, a white chicken breast, for one. Maybe a piece of fish. And fish, people say, well, we can't watch this fish, this, this fish. But just eat, if you eat fish, you eat fish. You're not going to overdo it. Okay? Or if you want to talk about really low-fat red meat, is good for you. Pork, why is pork so cheap in the market? Because it's a cheap piece of meat. That's my thing. If, 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 the, if you're shopping, if I go to Stater Brothers, shop in the meat department, look at the meats. The most expensive ones are usually the healthier ones. The ones that are least expensive are usually the ones not good for you. So use, your, use, use that type of theory when you, when you go shopping for meats. Are canned meats good for you? Canned meats. Canned fish, canned chicken breast, things like that. I think it is. Using water, they're not bad for you. I'll make a quick sandwich. At that point at home, quick from a lunch, at that point I'll take some a canned chicken breast, I'll take uh, uh, some maybe green onions, and a piece of toast. Ooh, fancy, no, it's very simple. When you make soup food very simple, it's very economical at the same time. So that's going to be my choices for protein. Anyone else that I may have missed? Protein you may have eaten that I, that I missed? Yes, Tim. Eggs. Give me? Eggs. Eggs, yeah, eggs. Eggs, I love eggs. Good, see? Nuts, walnuts. Walnut. Yes, and th those are great, like, non-meat proteins, like walnuts. Mm -hmm. uh, even broccoli, too, right? Broccoli is a great protein to eat. You'll eat it very often. What broccoli, is it? broccoli. Oh, broccoli. Broccoli is a phenomenal protein and high fiber. Avocado. Avocados. A little fatty, a little fatty, but as a, pro, as a protein though, okay? But having those, and my, my son told me too, an egg, a, a full egg, 
has all the nutrients you need in one day. Everything you need in one day. One egg. How many people will eat one egg a day? Yeah, but that's it though. That's all you need in one day. One egg. Okay. I, I can't. I, have, I need more than that. I'm going to start. I'll, I'll feel like I'm being starved if I have one egg a day. I need more than that. But that's going to give you, that'll give you two eggs. That'll give you the protein you need that, that, that has very, if you just eat the egg whites, very no cholesterol at all. Which is phenomenal. Okay. The next part, what are good carbohydrates for you? What are good carbs? What's a good carb? Vegetables. Vegetables, vegetables, green vegetables. I, I'm, not, I'm a green vegetable guy. Carrots. What else? Lettuce. Radish it. Radish it. Radish it. Anything, anything that's growing on the ground, correct? Yeah. It's going to be good for you. How about, how about white rice? Uh, eh. It's high in starch. Potatoes. I like potatoes. My wife says red potatoes are better for you. Okay, I'll give you that once in a while. How about french fries? No. Yeah. French fries, anybody? Yeah. They taste good. Tastes phenomenal. Yeah. I love french fries. Yeah. Love them. Salt. And the, what's the problem, right? With french fries or, or like that, it's not the potato, if it's potato, french fry, it's the, what it's cooked in. The oils in it, too. That's going to kill you and cause a heart attack. Ugh. Okay? So watching your intake of that is going to be, is, is good to do. How about chips? Chips and salsa. Anybody? Is that a good card? Salsa's yeah. good. Salsa's good. <laughs> chips are like, ah. How are chips made? They are fried. So if they're fried, oils, it's tough. Yes, ma'am. Like the baked ones. Baked, like baked potatoes. Baked potatoes, fine. I mean, the yeah. chips. Baked, baked, baked chips are, are better. But if you look, being, we'll go over this too in a second. Look at different Sorry. things. Look at packages. It says baked, healthy chips, organic, non-GMO, raised on a farm somewhere, I don't know. But look at the bag and go, What's the sodium content? What's the fat content? Look at the bag. Look at the label. That that they can't. They can. It's hard to lie on the label. I'm saying it's not impossible, but it's hard to lie on the label what it says. So you got you got to be careful. And, and for me, I, I like when it's cool like this. I'll make a chicken soup. Cut up some chicken. Cut up a potato. Put in chicken broth. Boom. Some green onions. I'm, green, I'm half Asian, so green onions are my in my family all the time. At that point, that's my, that's my go-to soup. Because what does soup do? It warms you up. And what does soup do? It fills you up. How much fat, cholesterol, sodium is in chicken broth? A lot. Sometimes, Sometimes you got to be careful. You have to get, you get the low sodium or the lowest possible on that one too. But minimal versus what you would get in something else. If you buy a can of soup, chicken soup, you're going to have a can like maybe this, not even this big, this Maybe this size. 600. 600 easy. And chicken broth will have maybe a third of that. So better for you. Okay? Again, better choices. Not the perfect, but better choices for you. Okay? Next part is what are good fats? A lot of people already know this one. What are good fats? Just to kind of review on that. Olive oil. Olive oil? Olive what type olive. of olive? What type of olive oil? What's the best one? Extra virgin. Extra virgin cold pressed. Cold pressed. Mm. Why cold pressed? It's not heated up. I don't know. It hasn't, it hasn't broke. When you heat something up, it breaks down the bonds, so you lose some of that factor. But when something is high fat, it has a lot of bonds. Low fat, it has more simplistic bonds that are better for you. It's easier to break down your body. It has less bonds. That's the way to say it. What, what are other good fats besides olive oil? Avocado. Avocado is good. Walnut. Well, that's phenomenal. Oh, Any nuts. nuts, right? Any nuts are good. Anything that's gonna that's going to be liquid at room temperature is phenomenal. How about canola? Oil? Canola? Oil? Anybody? I think so. Yes, I think. So. Yeah. That's a nut. Yeah. It's hard to find good ones. Is there? A hard to find good ones. Oil? It's hard because it's. We talk about oils. They break them down from a health perspective. Omega threes and omega sixes. <laughs> okay, omega threes are the good oils that your body needs for energy, okay? It allows your body to work properly and can solidify or not solidify in your body so it goes through your whole body. Omega-6s omega are inflammatory. Talked about pork earlier, pork, high in omega-6s. They don't break down very well. They cause inflammation. 
So for example, potato chips that are greasy potato chips, high in omega-6s, oils versus omega-3s. Yes, ma'am? Oh, butter. Butter. What kind of butter? Uh, real butter. Yeah, real butter, <laughs> organic. Um, there's like, that's a duck butter, something like that for one too. It's stuff that it's gonna be okay. Is this, yeah. is this butter just because it's butter? Or is it butter because it has, it's better for you? It's a good fat. Again, in moderation, right? What about ghee? Ghee's good. Ghee's good. How about uh, flaxseed? Flaxseed oil. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's really good. It's hard. It's sometimes not in a lot of foods, which really flaxseed oil is good for you, too. Okay? Um, yes? I, I have bought ghee before, but what is it? What is it? Go ahead. <coughs> well, it, it's the unsalted butter that's been <coughs> melted. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. And some... Now, you can make your own, but some brands are better than others. You just have to try it. It's, it's it doesn't been, even have to be refrigerated. We'll go shopping. Well, can you find oils or foods that, that will, for example, go bad at a certain time? That's how it go to. If it's good for you, it'll, go, it'll rot, they say, in a period of time. I remember I went to Trader Joe's for the first time a while back. Trader Joe's and I bought some bread. And with a week, I'm like, the bread went bad. I'm like, what is wrong with this bread? I went back and bought something else from Trader Joe's. I go, well, it's meant to go back because it's organic. I'm like, what? what's wrong with this bread? Why? Went there and said, okay, this makes sense because it's real bread. Yeah. Okay. How about coconut oil? Okay. Anybody? We thought it was good, but now I'm hearing that it's... It's good omega-3s and omega-6s. And you want to get the unrefined organic coconut oil. Un why is unrefined better than refined? Why? It's probably like sugar. <laughs> unrefined, it's natural. Unrefined means natural. Has not been processed, not taken out, not has not been, been if you want to call it heated, melted, taken out. Because so, why do they unrefine it? Because it lasts longer on the shelf. That's all it comes down to. It lasts longer on the shelf, so why not refine it to make it more profitable for the company selling the product? When I, I remember when I was when about maybe 10 years ago, I used to have to go to Sprouts to buy unrefined um, coconut oil. Now you can get them at Walmart, Target. Now, because why do they have it everywhere? Because people wanted it, people saw the benefit. I used to cook everything with. When you cook with, with coconut oil versus olive oil, it has a higher melting point, so it doesn't break down. When you, when you put olive oil in a pan and warm it up and up, it burns the oil, correct? Or burns your pan sometimes too. Coconut oil does not do that. It stays liquid at a higher temperature. You know, so that's that's my choice. I have that. I can't even. I put in my coffee also. Why is coconut? Why in, in going on a different note tangent? Coconut oil is is antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal. So it's antifungal, antibacterial, and antifungal. It's it's a good health benefit. So I put in my coffee every morning. Real scoop. What about coconut milk? It's not going to hurt you. It's like it's like putting a piece like milk in there. But coconut milk does have is high in sugar. But again, natural sugar, right? Not fake, not refined sugar or fake sugar, or Splenda or something like that. It's not going to hurt you. But when you were talking about oils, one of the things yeah. I'm finding with the natural and the raw mm -hmm. and everything, peanut butter. Uh, yes. Uh, the ones that have hydrogenated oils, but. I was recently looking at my son's peanut butter jar, yes. and it's a natural Skippy's. Well, I know <laughs> Skippy's has never been natural. It was palm oil. It, it was palm oil okay. and sugar and salt. The salt's okay, but yeah. the... Uh, it, it's something to where they can rename things so often it's to not confuse the public. It's like natural, even though it's got an oil in it. It's, it's called... There. How many attorneys are in California? How many attorneys? A lot. A lot of work for companies like food companies. So when you rename something, you say the public goes, that must be natural, must be good for you. Ah, maybe not. Do your homework. That's why I said I'm going to go second too. Why to read labels? Why to see what's really in there? Do your look online, wherever it's going to be too. Okay? Do your homework and go, okay, is this really good for me? When they say, when, it, when, when, when that brand has to market so much for that brand, what's that tell you? People aren't buying it. Like, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, 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 can read, I can read between the, the fine print. But really, 
what it comes down to is what are you comfortable having in your cabinet, in your pantry, in your fridge, that you can use every day to keep yourself healthy? And simple, simple things. Okay? Yes? Honey. How about honey? Honey's phenomenal. Honey's great. As long as it's raw. Raw. Mm -hmm. Raw. Organic, eh, but raw honey. That's all it comes down to. If you can find somewhere where it's more of a local honey, has local antigens with, for the local environment, great. But it's not gonna hurt, again, in moderation, right? Mm -hmm. Moderation is all we're hoping for. But a good sugar, natural sugar, not an artificial manufactured through a, through a, a company sugar. Simple things, all right? Next one. Also, how much fiber do we have every day? How much fiber? How do we track your fiber every day? What do we do? Huh. Oatmeal. <laughs> Oatmeal. Yep. Oatmeal is good fiber. But how much? That's a good question. I, I go anywhere from, if you want to give it a count, uh, anywhere from half, half a cup to a full cup of fiber per day. I, for me, I, because I can't sometimes keep track of my fiber because I'm not a good numbers guy, I have two scoops of Metamucil every night. Easy. It's my night drink. I don't think about it. I do it every night, boom, that's my night drink. Along with some magnesium, whatever it is in there. And some vitamins too. But when you have, for me, I'm, I'm a routine guy. If you have a routine, I may have a salad today. I may have only a small salad tomorrow. So I can do that every day as my, you can't, you can't have too much fiber. How's that? Oh, wheat bread, raw vegetables. Mm -hmm. Raw vegetables. Celery. Celery, yep. Okay, anything like that's gonna be good for you. Any, any greens is good for you. Oatmeal is phenomenal for one, too, especially like this, too. But, have, but why is fiber important to the body? Oh, it's really out. Allows your body to get through it, right? A lot of people have gallbladder issues, appendix issues, motility issues in their body, stomach pains, bloating, Reactive. gas pains, regularity. too. Regularity issues, too. Not enough fiber. The great American, American diet does not require fiber. Fiber in the American diet is those, this top and bottom bun of your sandwich or the side buns of your hot dog. Yeah. That's not fiber. That's even real bread. That's just starch. So you got to look at what am I doing to make sure every day, if I, don't, if I can't eat a salad every day, what can I do to make sure I get enough fiber every day? Number one killer in men over what? 50. Oh, man. Colon cancer. I get colon cancer. Not enough motility through your body. Not enough stuff going out the other end. Fiber, fruit, exactly. Fruit, fruit has phenomenal fiber in there. Yes, and, and realize you may not like apples, so eat an orange. But find your your fruit if you want to get it from a salad that you can have in your fridge every day. That's what I do. I have small tangerines I put on my counter every day. I take two to work every day. A quick little boom snack. And, and, and ten, for me, a tangerine or orange, or well, I like tangerines, not oranges. I can peel it right there, then boom, I can eat it right there. Mm -hmm. And apples in, I put an apple, I'll play golf tomorrow. I put a Ziploc bag with a napkin, that's my quick snack on, on, the, on the course. Easy. But finally, whatever works for you to have in your pantry, in your fridge, on your counter, that you can have so you can see it to eat it. If I don't, I'm a visual person. If I don't see it, I'm not going to eat it. That's my, that's my wife yesterday, a couple days ago. Where's that? Didn't we, order, didn't we have to get some steak and throw some steaks from Costco? She goes, yeah, it's in, in the fridge. I'm like, it's not in the fridge. She goes, well, she's at the freezer. And where the, I said, where's it? Because I can't see it. I can't. I'm not going to eat it. It's being able to kind of get that visual to remind you what to do. So fiber, get your fiber every day. If it's not from fruit, from vegetables, from things like that then like I do supplement every day so it's part of your supplementation so you don't forget. You get busy. Yes, Bill? Sprouts. Excuse me? Sprouts. Yeah, sprouts. What kind of sprouts? Like the store sprouts? Well, the spring sprouts and now they have a, uh, what the, is the oats. Yeah. The sprouted oats. Yep. That we're talking about. So, so sprouts for even beans also phenomenal fiber stuff. What can you, what can you have on a daily basis is part of your diet to have enough fiber. Phenomenal. Beans are phenomenal. A little, little bit more on carbs too. That's to get your carb intake also. But beans are phenomenal. Great. Yeah, 
crowds, do they have more nutrition than, let's say, beans, just regular beans or beans crowds? They, they do, but you have to realize you get the same thing different search to search for them. Search at different stores for them for one, too. I, I'm a Stater Brothers person, that's where I go. Okay, beets, I like to barbecue every Sunday, some chicken breast, whatever it is, for a couple days. So I go there, I get my, my wife likes bean sprouts, um, artichokes, and something else I pick up for every time I go. Alfalfa. Alfalfa. Things like that, too. So pick your, pick your thing you like to do. Even, and I'm okay with canned beans if it's low sodium. Even Walmart sells no salt beans now. Garbanzo beans, pinto beans, and black beans. Kidney beans, that's right, kidney, kidney beans. So the stores that are big stores are now selling healthier foods, so make the healthier choice. That's what I do. Not the more expensive either, same price. Yes? Well, you can always rinse your beans mm -hmm. uh, before you throw them in the soup pot or whatever. Yes. Yeah. What does rinsing do? Well, it removes the excess salt. Exactly. Gets us, and why, why is salt in our cans, our canned food? Why? Preservative. Preservative. Makes it last longer. Don't throw it out. Mm. Yeah, it's palatable. People love salt. <coughs> and salt's not bad. I'm going to go over a second. Salt's not bad for you, again, in moderation. It's just salt that we sometimes don't realize that our food's ready. Like, for example, I buy a can of normal canned kidney beans. That salt content may be 400 milligrams per can. I bet no salt. I'm saving all salt, plus I wash it too. There's no salt added. Can we get used to our taste buds to not have that flavor in our, in, every time we eat something? Oh, yeah. It just, we're humans, we could, we could do it. We're, we live long enough, we have self discipline to do it. We just don't want to sometimes. You know, we, we, we get french fries already salted, already fatty, greasy. And we want to put more salt or more sauce in there too and everything because of the taste. But can we sometimes good, but in moderation. Instead of, for example, getting a salad, putting on this big thing of ranch on it, just dip your salad into a little container of ranch. Little things we don't think of that allow us to save the calories and other things that our body we don't really need. Good so far? Again, this stuff you guys already know, and some things that, hey, what about this, this, and this, right? Other thing too, how do we, what, how do we burn calories? We can't just, we can't, for example, lose weight, look good, this part, we can't, maybe by our foods, what else do we have to do? Exercise. 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 Moving. Moving. Okay, don't let the rigor mortis kick in. Move. Okay? When we move, we burn calories. When we burn calories, we're burning off the extra carbs, fats that we don't our body doesn't need right then. And we need to do that to keep our body moving. Even our motility helps that too. Our body's physical move, motion allows our intestinal tract to work better too. When we move also, our body is less stressed. So when we're stressed, my patients come in that are stressed, they're constipated. They have stomach pains, they feel bloated all the time too. Allows that stress factor by moving to reduce as much as possible. So the movement can help you, but the problem is some people, they'll think I can, if I, if I work out for an hour, go for an hour walk, I can go eat three cheeseburgers. <laughs> no, that's how it works, right? Maybe when we're, when we're kids, yes. I'll give you that. When we were kids, we can give you that. But as you get older, even though there's controversy on it, our metabolism slows down. We have to watch what we eat as much as we exercise. Just because we went for a walk doesn't mean we can go eat, a, eat five, five tacos on Taco Tuesday. You know, I, sometimes, I, sometimes I'll figure that out myself too. And that happens, but that's a rare moment. We have to realize if, we want, if you want the net per day, be this calorie intake and this burn, so we either lose weight or feel better or look better, we have to do a daily, daily thing. It can't just be Monday through Friday, the Sunday, Saturday we take off. We minimize a daily thing so our body can set as a normal team. When we have, when we eat okay and we start working out enough, what happens to our metabolism? It slows down. It actually, but if we're doing, if we're eating less, and we're working out more, what happens in metabolism? Goes up. Goes up. Starts to burn more. I had a lady come this weekend. She's been on it. She's been working hard on her diet. She's been working, doing all well last few weeks. And she had a bad day at Easter because it was good food. And I broke down. I'm like, okay. I asked her, how much weight did you gain the next day? She goes, she goes, did you want to go on the stairs like this? She gained like half a pound. Because I ate more than that, but your body is 
metabolize them faster. High more fiber getting out of your body faster too. So when you start working out, when you start eating better, even though it may take a couple days off down the line, your body will still know what it's doing right and maintain that step. Okay, so burn calories, do your walking, do your stretching. I've done how many classes here for stretching and exercises? I call it a plethora because I have no idea. Too many so far. More to come, right? Hydration. Why, why should we drink water? Or does, does, is coffee hydrating us? No. Coffee is for the caffeine, which I require every morning. Yeah. Body requires caffeine, right? Mine does at least. But, but some drinks will hydrate us, some will dehydrate us. Hydration means your body is able to absorb the water and work at a higher level of function. Your body is 80% water. It needs to be something like that. It needs water for the muscles to function, for your lungs to function, for your heart to function, for your brain to function properly. Well, whoever, who had COVID this last couple of years? I had COVID. So I had that. I couldn't breathe well. I was coughing a lot. So my body was unable to absorb a lot of water. So I had a lot of muscle cramping, even some brain fog. My wife says I still have brain fog, and I'm still, but I'm better though. It's actually better. So brain fog. I don't know why. But a lot of it is, can we hydrate enough? So when we hydrate enough, we're drinking, for example, anywhere from four to five to maybe six of these a day, minimal, minimal for hopefully at least six of these a day. Okay. Why do people not drink water? You forget. You forget? What else? Exactly. So can we drink water times a day, say before five, six o'clock, so we have enough time to not use the restroom all night? Mm -hmm. Or if we're going to go somewhere, I'm not going to use the restroom all because I'm not going to stop something that's to go to the restroom. So control, but what, the problem is, well, the, the benefit is once you drink enough water, your body will self-regulate to not want to kick it out as much. Our body is called homeostasis. If I drink just one of these a day, okay, that's all my body's used to. If I start drinking two to three, I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom more for a couple of days until my body gets used to two or three. Gets used to two or three bottles a day, they go, okay, that's your normal now, okay, I'll absorb that. After about four or five days, you start drinking another one, they go, maybe we may have to go back a little bit more, but after five, maybe a week or so, drinking like four or five of these, and he goes, okay, that's your normal now. Your body will self-regulate, home, go to homeostasis, based on how you change its absorption, its load amount, based on water, and what else you're doing in your body, okay? What are good dehydrators of the body? What beverages, what, what do we drink that dehydrates? We talked about coffee. What else dehydrates your body? Alcohol. Alcohol, yes. Tea with caffeine. Tea with caffeine. What else? How about sodas? No. Sodas dehydrate, because what do sodas have? Sugar. Sugar. Sugar is a big dehydrator also, <coughs> OK? Even salt can sometimes, even though it's electrolyte, can make you feel dehydrated. So realize certain things that we drink all the time, and what do people drink? They drink Diet Coke instead. What does Diet Soda have in there that regular soda does not have? Regular soda has, regular Coke, regular Coca-Cola, has six tablespoons of sugar in there. Who would put six tablespoons of sugar in their mouth? Nobody, right? Not that I know, no one I know of. My but sister Sister-in-law, she has issues. We'll go over that later. But, but something to her, but we do have the soda. So what is, diet sodas have what instead? Aspartic acid, aspartame, things like that, that are, are chemically, chemical taste, tasters, if you want to call it that, they make you feel like you're drinking a soda. But again, that's more of a chemical in your body. What is aspartic, aspartame or aspartic acid, what was it first meant for? Was it, what was it actually originated for? The chemistry of it. Vietnam, Vietnam War, like a form of orange. It's for chemical warfare. Okay, the orange thing that got everybody sick. Exactly. <laughs> In the war. Oh, but they, once war is over, like, eh, just convert that to something we can make people drink our sodas more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, <laughs> I don't have attorneys on my side. Who companies do, they can do whatever they want to do, right? You have to be smarter than, than some people. So hydration has to be part of your daily routine. Okay, I mean, and some people have like this big jug they carry everywhere. I'm like, that's so much work. Just think, okay, how do we, I'm gonna have these a day, make sure I drink, say my last one by five, six o'clock at night, I'm gonna go to bed at nine or 10. So that point I don't have to go back them all night. But realize water is so important for your health, not just because we have to. Okay, so any questions about water? 
Well, I have one hint. Yes. One hint, and it said always have a full bottle by your bed. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to drink it all night, but in the morning, before you go to the bathroom, make sure that bottle's gone. Why, why is it good to drink water in the morning? Gets everything going. And when you're sleeping, your body's natural system actually detoxifies your body. If it doesn't have fluid to push it through your system, it won't get out. So having that first glass of water, and if you can, put a piece of lemon in there too, allows your metabolism to increase even faster in the morning. But push those night toxins out of your body, because your body will naturally, your kidneys and liver, will actually detoxify your system when you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. it, know, it has some inter internal innate system that does that. It's magic, that's called magic, I don't know what it is. It's magic, whatever it may be. Okay. Next one is, talked about earlier, is check the label. If I'm gonna buy a can of something, something in a can or a package, any package at all, why is it good to read the label? What's the number one thing you look for in there? MSG. MSG, yes, yes. I know some of the people that are alert, really alert. Yes, they don't realize that they have it or don't have it. They have it again. How about sodium? <laughs> talked about earlier, right? Yeah. Sodium is a great way to preserve your foods in a can or a package. Even, even, even ever, ever uh, eat uh, dry uh, top ramen, like the ramen noodles, if you, it, it's, even though it, it's not a liquid form, there's still salt in there. Again, it's magic. If you put the package in there too, the spicy package, again, more salt. Realize, what am I doing when I, when I buy something from a store, even though nothing's more expensive too, either help my health or not help my health. To read the label, even frozen foods too. If you buy a frozen dinner at a, at a grocery store, it says organic, non-eat GMO, made with chickens that were roaming free in Montana somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> that ain't like great carrots in the ground, who knows? But it still says, again, a lot of salt, sodium, because it has preserved that food. So look for the label, look at the protein level, look at the carb level, okay? Even the fats too, right? The fats are a way to preserve some stuff, Look at the fat content in that can or that food over eating too. Is that what you want to put in your body? I don't know. Maybe you're okay with it. Like I like canned tomatoes. Why? They may, it's, I, I buy the, usually the no salt or the very low sodium ones because it's hard to put fat in canned tomatoes. Hard to hide it. And it's a very simple food you can use. I use all the time with anything. Easy to cook with. Uh, that's that's my, my trick of what I do. Right. Next one, talked about stress in most of my talks here, <coughs> and then some foods help fight inflammation, which is a form of stress to the body internally, and some foods will feed inflammation. Why, why, if someone's under stress, why do they gravitate toward junk food <coughs> or high sugar, high fat food? Why do you think that is? Why, why someone, if someone's under stress, why do they go like, I don't feel like a carrot today, I feel like a bag of chips. Why is that? What's that? A quick, a quick, like, boom, I feel good again, versus like, there was nothing in that can of, or that package of ruffles. Zero, zero health benefit. And realize our stress hormones, when we're under stress, especially long term, our stress hormones are fed by high sugar, high fat, high salt foods. Our stress is fed by chips by, say, ice cream, or things like that for one, too. But the, the junk foods. My office is up here on Foothill and Eco by U.S. Bank. I see U.S. Bank and McDonald's. I drive McDonald's, get home every day. There's a line of at least four or five cars every day. So they must all be stressed. I don't know. You know, but a lot of it is, they, some people just don't know what to eat and what to do. When you, you don't realize I'm eating that because it feeds my stress versus I eat foods that fight my stress. Food you talk about fight, that fighter stress are good foods again. Again, the good proteins, the good carbs, the good fats. And good fats meaning that not the high French, not the high fructose corn syrup uh, greases that they cook French fries in. Even in and out, to in and out, okay? My stepdaughter did an experiment in and out because it's supposed to be the natural fries. So they to put those fries next to, next to McDonald's fries and left it there for three weeks. Neither of them went bad. Not because the fries are bad, because the oils in and out mix their fries in, is the oils that can make that very preserved even faster. So realize it's not just, again, the french fries, it's how you cook everything, how you bake it or fry it, or whatever you do. So realize oils will make your body feel more, feed the stress, versus good foods will help fight the stress. 
in your body physically and mentally. All right? Next one. Energy. Which, which foods, we talked about, again, this is all kind of a review. Which food gives energy? Short term? The chips. Boom. Boom. Short term. The fruits, long term energy. Has to go through our body to absorb it, right? It has to go through our body to absorb it. The fruits will give us energy. Good sugars will give us energy. Even good proteins will give us energy. Proteins break down as energy also. What's the highest energy food we can get? This is a, this is a big test I think in my chemistry test. Is fats. Quick fats will give you high energy. Problem is, the long-term fats make your body not basically not work as properly. They drop your energy. So you have to be careful what you eat, how often you eat, and again, not to be crazy about it, but what if, if I want energy right now, I'm gonna have my tangerine. Because that's gonna be good energy for me. I'm not gonna have a soda. I don't even like soda anymore. I had soda probably 15 years ago, my own personal story. I, I read something about diet soda, I'm like, this thing is horrible, why didn't soda ever again? I drink, I drink soda for like a full month. When you had a sip of a soda, I'm like this doesn't even taste the same. When you lose that taste bud for something, you realize that's artificial, this is natural. Water's natural, iced tea is naturalish, coffee is naturalish. So having something that's not artificial allows your body to function better, not build those, those chemicals that what do chemicals cause in our body? The big C. Not COVID, cancer. We don't talk about that, but what we eat every day, 20 years, series later, is causing our cancer in our body and our brain too. So if you want to live to 100, it takes us doing it now, eating properly, eating simply, versus going too crazy. All right? And a brighter note, we've talked about sugars and salt already too. Okay? They're not evil in moderation. And the right, if you want to call it not salt, but eating foods that that you take the salt off or low salt okay, or long with low sugar is okay. But I know some people that they'll have a cup of coffee and put three teaspoons of sugar in there. I'm like, you just are drinking sugar with your coffee. I don't know what you're doing. It's like, hey, can we can we used to maybe because I have, I have sweet taste buds, used to foods that are more bland, then they're just having to be all fluffy and, and strong flavored all the time. I make my my chicken broth with some chicken breast, some potatoes, some onions. I don't need anything else. It's all you need to put some pepper in there for flavor. Huh. Pepper, not very fancy. You know, but simple things you can do that give you some flavor without having to over flavor it and cause more health issues. Okay? Next one, simple thing, supplements. Who takes vitamins here? I do. Okay, why do we take vitamins? Why do we take minerals? Why? Why do we do that? Exactly. Our foods, if you eat foods, you're not going to get, and this is America, this is 2022, our foods do not have the minerals items they had 20 years ago, even 30 years, even 10 years ago. Our foods are the protein, carbs, and fat, which me and my wife, me and my wife argue with every Friday. Okay, that's argument, but not the minerals and vitamins. I take, because I like my fiber, I take a vitamin every night has the minerals and vitamins I need for the day. I'm thinking about it. You know, I can eat probably organic every day. I could probably do this every day. It's too, it not too much work, it's too much thought process. By having a vitamin for me, a supplement, allows me to cheat, but I don't get enough vitamin C that day, enough minerals that day. So I, because the problem is, if you have, in most cases, not all of them, most cases, can you take too many vitamins? You can't, you can't. But if you take the supplement, like just a multivitamin every day, a multivitamin every day, your body will naturally kick it out if it doesn't need it. So it's hard to, to over supplement. Like the big thing a couple years ago was take a lot of vitamin D. Now you can, but there are some levels where it does become more toxic. It does store into your fat cells, cause it to be stupid. But in moderation, at that point, it's not going to hurt you. Again, simple economic. All right, any questions yet? <coughs> simple? Economic? I think so. Yeah. Last one. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You know, my doctor <coughs> says take vitamin D3 and um, calcium. Yes, why? For the bones. For the bones. Okay. okay. But some people say, well, you have to take them at night. 
and which I, if I do, most of the time I'll forget in the morning, I'll find them right there. So, so it's I have to take them at lunchtime, <laughs> so that well, I remember. Well, it's a compliance, right? It's compliance. I, I take them when I can remember, when I can remember to take them. Yeah. I take them, I put my, my supplement bottles by my coffee maker at night, so when I make my coffee, I go, oh, I've got to take my pill today. So compliance is the key, not if and when. It's not when, it's compliance. Can we take them without thinking about it once a day, whatever it might be? I'm a more compliance person, not the night or morning, whatever it is too, or just more compliance. That's the key, all right? Yes, question? Okay. So a lot of when we talk about eating to lose weight, and we talked about earlier is, can we eat enough? And my rule of thumb, if I want to lose weight, can I eat but still be hungry? Right? Okay, can I eat versus like, I know I need it, now I need a nap. I'll eat enough to where I, I feel, I feel I'm eating enough, but not feel like I'm full. That's how I judge it from one to. And a lot of people, if you want to think about numbers, talked about earlier, if your body requires 1,200 calories per day, you only, only need 1,000 calories per day. Instead of eating a cheeseburger, have a piece of fish or a piece of chicken. Instead of having a burger with pieces of buns, have one with lettuce instead. They call it protein style instead. Yes, ma'am? Uh, I was reading somewhere where the Japanese culture has a saying And realize our brain has a delayed reaction called the hypothalamus, which dogs don't have, which it tells us in delayed reaction when to stop eating. 8% is when you're, if you stop that or slow down your eating, if you wait 20 minutes, you're like, now I'm full. Problems when we eat, we have an hour lunch break. We have 20 minutes. So we want to eat right away versus letting our, our, our food settle. So give your, your brain time to think, 8% hey, is phenomenal. 8% or give your, give your chance, your brain time to understand now you have enough food in your stomach, give yourself a chance to realize I'm going to eat too much if I go overdo it. I have a, uh, my son's friend, he's the slowest eater I've ever seen in my life. Good. He has the warmest food of like twice. I'm like, what do you take forever for? But he never overeats. He's like, that eh, enough. I'm like, thank God we got to go. I'm late already. Or something. I don't know what it is. There's something to where when you, when you have that, that, either 80% or that rule, if I slow down, my body tells me when I'm full, so I may, I may take that home instead. It's okay, it's unlike my grandparents told me, it's okay to take food home. Because you plate the whole time. I remember my Aunt Olga in Philadelphia, her and Uncle Tony, they used to love making, you ever have gnocchis before, gnocchis? They're potato, they're, they're a pasta, like a little dumpling, made out of, made out of potatoes. It's like, a little, little one here, that's like at least maybe, two, three ounces. You have 10 of those, you're full. She would make a, she would feed us a pot on the, on the dining table, and she had another pot waiting at the, at the inside of the kitchen. I'm, I can't breathe from this one pot I've had already, mm -hmm. full for this, it's just, you can't stop eating. So, so again, some cultures, eating is part of this feeling like you're part of the family. Mm -hmm. But realize a lot of what we've learned in our past has caused problems now in the present, so let's not repeat that make our lives healthier physically, mentally, and you want to call it a little, a little longer life. All right? A little better. What's that? A little better. Yeah, it's a quality of life, right? Yeah. Quality of life. We, we, none of us here are sick, okay? But can we have better quality of life than what we do now, today, tomorrow, next week, next month, sure. the rest of the year? Sure. At that point, we live, so we're, I have a patient who's 75 years old, looks like he's 50. He's done triathlons, marathons, Hawaiian Ironman, which is hard to do. He still swims half an hour a day, runs jogs an hour a day, and bikes two hours a day. That's his lifestyle. He doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't eat fat. He wants to live. His mom is 100 plus years old, 103 years old, healthy physically and mentally. And can we talk, what, what is, how does genetics affect our health? Genetics. It's part of it, but not everything. Exactly. It's still, it's still, we control our lifestyle. We put in our body. What we do to our body. How much we move. When people say, my genetics, I'm going to have a heart attack, I think I'm going to die. I'm like, well, that's not very positive. So can we not worry about genetics, worry about our lifestyle, control our lives. 
Because it's up to us to put what we put in our mouth, put in our body, put in our brain. All right? That's my soapbox for the day. Mm -hmm. Questions? Comments? Good? Well, you talk about exercise. There's yes. a brand new open Good. community center oh. on 4th of Mountain in Ontario. Really? And they have a gorgeous brand new outdoor swimming pool. Fourth of Mountain. It's five feet deep. What? And it's, and it's got lap lanes, and from 9 to 12, it's open for the public to swim. So and Mountain you, Forest. You can Street. live anywhere. That's it's awesome. It's on, called the Munoz. Munoz? You Munoz? Know, it's just one I, block west on 4th Street off of Mountain. Yeah, if you go from Mountain, yep. you go west, and the street is Camellia. Yeah, okay. You go in Camellia, you get to the park, to the parking lot. <laughs> it's, it's so a, beautiful. Please. It is, very nice. It's amazing how cities are stepping up to realize, and even, even counties too, if we take care of our people in our community, at that point we can have less health issues, less places to house them, so we're going to save money in the long run. Mm -hmm. And having better community. In the YMCA here, too, I'm a big YMCA proponent. At that point, go and do something for your health. You, know, you have to swim laps, or can you, just, can you even walk in the pool? It's right, five feet. Yeah, yeah. You, you, do you can you walk, can do your swim aerobics, whatever you want to do. Yeah, well, it's, find, amazing. it's amazing. It's gorgeous. But find a way to do it, something that works for you, whatever you like to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to do this. It's whatever you like to do that's going to get you active, healthy. Because once you're ha acting healthy, that was the mindset. You think better. You have perfected in life. You're more grateful. You, you, you're happier. People around you are happier too for some reason. It's like magic. How it works. Alright. Anything else? Thank you for entertaining me today. Hope that was helpful. A couple things that I, even I've got about too. Alright. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. See you guys next month. Have fun.